Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2 and Online School. We're back here on YouTube and today we have another paddling quick tip. This week we're talking about powering the pendulum, which is addressing positive, neutral, and negative blade angles. Positive blade angle is as the paddle is oriented away from us, like so. As it travels back, it will go to neutral, and ultimately as it passes our body, this is a negative blade angle. In seated paddle sports, the paddle will always operate as a pendulum going from this positive position and traveling to the negative position through this pendulum. Powering the pendulum is identifying when to power the stroke throughout this pendulum motion. The easiest way to think about this is our power with our body translating to force on the water. This is not a true ratio, but this analogy gives us a concept of how our body's movement influences the stroke and how much power we can get in the water. The analogy is, is as we put 50 pounds of pressure on the paddle, when it is positive, it doubles with the leverage advantage with the positive blade angle to create 100 pounds of force on the paddle. So as we're here in the positive phase, we're getting 100 pounds of pressure for 50 pounds of force. As the paddle's neutral, we want to think about it being a one-to-one -one ratio where we have 50 pounds of our work turning into 50 pounds of pressure in the water. Going to the negative, we want to think about that force being divided by two. 50 pounds of force with our body only translates to 25 pounds of pressure on the water. So with all things equal, we have 100 pounds, 50, and then as we get back to the end of the stroke, we get less return for the amount of effort that we put into the stroke late in the stroke. The obvious idea is that you want to keep a lot of the powering of the pendulum on the front half of this pendulum. But this also doesn't mean that we exclude or remove the back end of this pendulum. It serves a function, but it can be abused in two extremes, by powering it too much and scooping water, or by removing too soon and turning that pendulum into a much shorter range of motion. One of the most common coaching cues that I hear as people watch these videos is the paddle goes past his body, it must not be right. So when we're looking at powering the pendulum, yes, the stroke as it is in front of us is powering the, the movement the most. But the function of the pendulum behind us can be utilized to maximize the power phase. We've talked about in previous videos about having a follow through and how the exit serves as that follow through. When we are powering the pendulum, the power is up in the front, but as we complete the motion, we relax the body and allow the blade to come out effortlessly, but the blade will always leave the body behind us. Does this mean that we want to scoop water and try to put 100 pounds of pressure on the paddle to only get 50 pounds of force forward? Absolutely not. But this also doesn't mean we get to a certain point and just take the blade out because mitigating this section hinders the motion here in the middle. One of the reasons that we hear this coaching cue of never let the blade pass the body is because it is a simple, all-encompassing coaching cue that fixes certain aspects of the stroke. Many paddlers, as they begin paddling, are not going to have positive blade angle. They're going to put the blade in next to them, and they're going to try and focus on this back half. The coaching cue of removing that forces you to move the boat by being more upfront with the stroke, which establishes some good habits. With all extreme blanket coaching cues, they come at a cost in their simplicity. Paddling is a very complicated sport, and if you approach it in absolute statement, it will lead to long-term problems. Another example of absolute statement that can fix aspects of the stroke but harm others is keeping both arms straight throughout the entire paddle stroke. The point of this cue is to make sure that during the power phase, we have both arms extended and we talk about our power triangle in a previous video. We ensure that we are in this power triangle position, but now that when we keep the arms straight the entire time, the other aspects of the stroke have now become very clunky. The exit, the recovery, the setup, everything is lost because the elbows are locked. All of this in an attempt to have one aspect of the stroke good comes at the cost of everything else going out the window. A broken clock is correct twice a day. 
Having absolute statements that force movement means that you will be correct in some regards, but in the entirety of the spectrum, you will be lost. A clock has many moving parts that all work together to read time as it progresses forward. When we are going through paddle strokes, there are moments where the arms are straight, but there are moments when the arms are bending and we're relaxed. And this is what allows us to have this nice fluid motion as opposed to looking like a robot. So back to powering the pendulum, when we see that the blade should never go past the body, this comes at the cost of having a fluid, dynamic, full stroke. The other way that we can identify that paddling past the body is not a detrimental thing is by looking at high level racers, whether in the Olympics or long distance racers, 100% of them allow the blade to pass their body. Only in very specific outrigger canoe sprinting situations will the blade leave very far in front of the body to allow the stroke rate to go up to 90 or 100. These are only for very short bursts to catch a wave or to pass somebody, but for 99% of long distance efficiency, the blade will always pass the body. There are hundreds of examples that we can look at of paddlers freeze framed with the blade behind the body. Does this mean that they are powering the back half of the pendulum? No, but they allow that release. The same idea with the wing blade. So as the blade goes in the water and we begin to rotate, my maximal rotation with the body is going to have the blade next to me. And then the act of the blade leaving the body will always set the blade behind me. There are freeze frames of hundreds of surf ski or kayak racers that do this. If you were to have the blade removed next to the body, it means that you have to cut your rotation short. So instead of turning my body to a maximum, I can turn my body to here. And by initiating that exit phase, the blade is now gonna be removed next to me. But there's this entire section of the stroke here that is now lost. By maximizing your rotation and then exiting, it gets the most out of the stroke and the release and the blade will always end up behind you. Coaches that say they have the blade leave the water next to them have hundreds of photos of them with the blade behind them. Again, it is a simple, absolute coaching cue that forces paddlers to be more upfront and thinking about the in front of them. But taken literally, which it is by the majority of paddlers that hear this coaching cue or only seen it demonstrated on land will now try to have the blade leave next to them and their stroke looks something like this. With the kayak stroke we're setting moving the hip to a maximum, shoulder to a maximum, then the elbow bends and this arm extends and now the blade leaves and it will always be slightly behind us. Again, do we scoop water and shoot that blade behind us and power the back end of the stroke? No. Once you are done with your rotation, right, you can begin relaxing the body and this blade is going to flick out of the water effortlessly, but it will be behind you. I'll try and post a bunch of photos here of paddlers with the blade distinctly behind them, whether in a sprint format or a long distance or paddling in the ocean. If they're in an outrigger canoe, if they're in a surf ski, it doesn't matter. The blade will typically always be right behind you as you're leaving. Paddling is very in depth. It has many moving parts and they change in real time throughout the stroke. Approaching it with absolute concepts will leave you vulnerable to making those steps forward in your paddling journey. At the K2NOnlinePaddleSchool.com, we have 200 videos breaking down everything into pieces, the top arm, the bottom arm, the shoulders, the hips, the leg drive, pushing off of the heels, breaking down the stroke into the setup, catch, power, exit, and if you're using outrigger canoe, the recovery. Breaking these concepts down for beginners, into intermediates, into master levels, allow us to talk about the same topics over and over and expand on these ideas so you actually understand how to approach these paddle strokes to get the most out of it. Hearing simple cues about the blade never passing the body will cripple your paddling journey indefinitely. Watching high level paddlers, assessing their movements, breaking down why they're choosing to move this way, and then trying to emulate it puts us in position to be at the highest level that we can. So if you haven't checked out the website, this is an excellent opportunity. Go on over. We have yearly and monthly subscription plans. You can cancel anytime.
If you need help with your paddling technique, we also offer one-on-one -on -one video reviews. Send us some videos, we'll break it down, send it back to you, and we can take the steps working together to make sure that your paddle stroke gets cleaned up. So in review, we have the pendulum from the front of the stroke to the end of the stroke. We are powering the front and the middle of that stroke, but don't be afraid to allow the blade to travel through the back half of the pendulum effortlessly and fluidly to finish that motion of the middle of the stroke. The follow through powers the middle section. By taking away the follow through, you hinder your power transfer tremendously. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. If you have not subscribed yet, we are so close to a thousand subscribers on the channel. Please check it out. Hit the bell on the top to get notifications of our next videos as they drop. We try to post one or two videos every week. We've posted some fun videos to mix things up a little bit on the channel, but we at our core want to give you guys some informational videos just like these. If you have any questions, please comment, message, email, anything to get in touch. I try to respond as quick as I can. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video and we'll see you next week for the next paddle tip.